This morning, our series Protecting the Planet looks at the growing concerns over how we get the minerals we need for batteries in electric vehicles. In the first quarter of this year, EV registrations in the U.S. jumped 63 percent from a year earlier and now make up about 7 percent of all vehicle sales. Some think we should mine the ocean floor for those elements, while others say that would destroy a crucial ecosystem. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy introduces us to a team that thinks it has the solution. It looks like something from a very low budget sci fi movie, but this underwater robot could help accelerate a high tech future. EV batteries, as well as solar panels, wind turbines, and even our smartphones, are made with various metals, including copper, cobalt, and nickel. Mines around the world that supply them often have environmental and even human rights issues. But there is also a vast supply deep down on the ocean floor. How much of this stuff is down there? A lot. Roughly the same volume of nickel as the entire global terrestrial nickel resource. The second question is how do you get it? Renee Grogan's answer is this, a deep sea mining prototype called Eureka. So Eureka is, is, wow, we've got the solution. Grogan's company, Impossible Metals, is trying to solve the problem of how to harvest the seafloor without damaging it. Impossible because this is hard to do? Yes, very much so. We need to be able to ensure that the ecosystem on the seafloor remains intact. On the Canadian side of Lake Huron, they lowered Eureka into the water for a test run. So you guys almost put like a little sandbox down there? Yeah, exactly. We watched as its retractable arm, driven by artificial intelligence, plucked these rocks off the sand. They mimic the so-called nodules that contain metals on the bottom of the ocean. It kind of looks like that claw thing at the arcade when you're trying yes. to get the stuffed animal. Exactly. Is the idea that this thing would only pick up the rocks that actually have something of value on them? Yes, so the claws themselves are driven by the AI and saying, take it, leave it, take it, leave it. The company would deploy a fleet of underwater vehicles, each costing $5 million, that can travel four miles down into the deep sea. Cameras and arms come alive as they hover over, but never touch the ocean floor, only collecting valuable nodules that do not contain animal life. Sitting here today, can you say you can do all of those things with no qualification? No, we can't say that now. The shallow water prototype is the first step along that journey. Typical deep sea mining involves dredging the bottom of the ocean with giant robot shovels. That could soon begin if the UN established International Seabed Authority grants mining permits in what's known as the Clarion Clipperton Zone, about 2 million square miles of the Pacific Ocean stretching from Hawaii to Mexico rich with mineral deposits. In 2019, 60 Minutes showed how companies plan to collect metals there by essentially vacuuming up the ocean floor. That could destroy the habitat of more than 5,000 deep sea species. We have better maps for the moon than we have for the deep ocean. Douglas McCauley is an ocean scientist at UC Santa Barbara. He says deep sea mining would crush marine life and stir up toxic plumes of sediment that could spread throughout the ocean, impacting fisheries humans depend on. Hundreds of scientists have come out against this mining. Against the extraction. Environmental groups are staging protests, and many major automakers say they don't plan to use deep sea materials. We can't. Um, try to save the planet by breaking the planet in the process. Those several years of mining are going to cause centuries of damage. Do you think that it's possible to do this in a responsible way? To do it tactically with that kind of precision is going to be hard or perhaps even impossible. So if impossible is here and possible is here, where are you at? <laughs> I'd say we're about halfway along the path. Renee Grogan expects her company's technology to be deployed at commercial scale within five years, perhaps allowing them to revisit their name. I'm looking forward to the day we can just, yeah, take, <laughs> take those two off. off and look at that. Change it's the possible. name again. <laughs> For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Collingwood, Ontario.